<coughs> we had the, I've obviously reopened this polytune uh, sequence patch. Uh, you'd have noticed when we had the poly object up here and we had the delays running from uh, from here, uh, the we were getting the same volume, the same velocity from the from the delayed note. It may be that we want to have the delayed note uh, quieter. Um, so that would be a, a a circumstance in which we might want to put the poly object below the make note object, well, between the make note object and the note out object. So that's what we'll do. Um, I mean, this is this is only an example of how you might want to use it, um, but it just shows that how you can. So uh, make a poly object, a pipe object, sorry, um, and we'll make two inlets and a 240 millisecond delay again. So, oh, sorry about that. Oh dear, that's not good. So I'll connect these up. So this will be our delayed um, output. And between our velocity output, I'm going to put a divide by... Uh, well, I'll start by dividing by 1, which means it'll be the same as the input. But we can, of course, change that. And that means that, uh, obviously, we've got the direct outlets, which go from the note out and the velocity out straight into... Sorry, make note outlets um, into the note out object. And we also have the same outlets going into the pipe object and both note number and velocity being delayed. Um, <coughs> and the this uh, divide by uh, part is to uh, to attenuate the velocity. So at the moment, as I say, it's divided by one. Uh, so we'll get basically exactly what we had before. But we might change that to a smaller value. So if we divide by one point, say one point, uh, one point five, you can just about hear the second note um, that's delayed uh, by obviously a, a, and attenuated. And of course, by by divide by using divide, it means that any note offs, i.e. a zero coming out of this, uh, the velocity outlet is going to be divided by one point five or whatever. So zero divided by that number is going to be zero anyway. So yeah, that, that's just a circumstance in which you could use the two inlets of the pipe object. Yeah, shut up. There you go, you heard that. So that's the use of uh, delay objects within the, the control part of the program. Um, so what happens if you want to use delays within the MSP? So you want to delay signal. Um, well, I'm going to close this down, hit save, and go back to this part. So these are control means of delay. Now there is um, a, as as with um, many um, Max objects, we have an MSP object that's also called delay, um, or, and but with a tilde. However. Um, this is probably not an object you should be looking to use for uh, for delays in in the way that we've just been using them with pipe the pipe object for example so if you like musical delays rather than signal processing delays uh, the delay tilde object you can you you might want to use in filtering or something the reason for this is that if you give it an argument that argument is in samples it's not in milliseconds so if you gave an argument of say 50 um, it would give you a 50 millisecond, uh, sorry, 50 sample delay, rather than a 50 millisecond delay. Um, now, I suppose you could make use of that. Um, you could, you could, you know, 44.44100 uh, 44, um, uh, sorry, sample delay is going to give you a second's worth of delay. Um, but uh, it's probably not ideal for our purposes here. So I'm going to forget the delay tilde object. Uh, we might come back to that if we discuss um, filtering or possibly reverb later on. But in the meantime, we can have a look at some MSP objects that do a much better job of what we're likely to want to do um, if, if you're wanting to do kind of, as I say, musical or rhythmic perhaps delays.
and that is the tap uh, the tap in and in conjunction with the tap out object so these are two objects which as I say work together um, and they essentially work like I suppose buffer and I suppose or a groove or a play tilde object one is a, a buffer so a sort of a mean a, a holding tank for audio information and the other one is uh, somehow processing that information or decide where from the that tank we're going to take information from um, hopefully that'll become clear as I as I as, as we go um, but that means you've got to connect them now the connector uh, unusually for a tilde, a, a tilde object or an MSP object um, is a looks like a control cable um, uh, but that is that's uh, basically that your audio will come in here and come out here um, it, it's, uh, it just means that you could connect this to a variety of different tap out objects and they will all use the same buffer information if you like so that tank that we've stored the sa sta sound data in can be accessed by anything, any of the tap outs that it's connected to. So, um, <clears throat> uh, well, let's let's start with a, a click object, click tilde. Connect that to the tap in, and a uh, button object there. And I can't remember whether we've looked at the click object before. It's simply a um, a an object which generates a click, uh, an audio click when you uh, send it a bang. <clears throat> and we'll send the tap out straight to an easy DAC output. I don't really need to go through anything else at the moment. So if I turn that on, uh, actually I'll also connect the click directly to the output so that we can hear the delay. There we go. Now, uh, we need to give arguments to both the tap-in and the tap-out objects. The tap-in object takes um, a duration for your buffer. So you need to say how much audio information you uh, want to be able to store. And of course that depends on the length of your delay. Um, but what we'll do is we'll, we'll just give it a general uh, buffer length of say 10 seconds. We may only use a fraction of that. Um, but uh, we will put in 10, 10 seconds, actually that's 100 seconds, sorry, 10 seconds, there you go. And what tapping then does is it will always, will contain within it the last 10 seconds worth of data that it received. So it's a kind of moving buffer, unlike the buffer object which you record into it and, um, and it, it, it continues to store that data. The, the tap in object is constantly being updated. Um, so it will only ever have the last um, 10 seconds worth of data that you recorded. And then the tap out object reads that tap in information um, and outputs, uh, well, like whatever whatever value you specified. So if I put in 2000 there, then it will, um, it will read 2000 milliseconds into the 10,000 milliseconds worth of data that we have stored in tap in. Um, so as I say, this is not making use of all of the, the data that we have stored in this object. Um, but of course, well, as you'll see in a minute, we might have other delays uh, which which do go up to that 10 second worth. Well, I'll come back to that in a minute. So um, if we listen, we'll hear, first of all, if I click this, we hear it. There you go. So you heard the, the first click and then you heard two seconds later the, the, the other click. Um, so that's our basic kind of delay mechanism.